So you've all seen the news about the power the new AMD Zen 3 chipsets have to offer and are thinking Team Red? Want to pull the trigger on a new motherboard, but should you drop a few more dollars on an X570 motherboard or get a B550 and save a few bucks towards an overpriced graphics card? With X570 fully using PCIe Gen 4, seems like a pretty easy choice, right? Well, not exactly. By the way, as we went to film, we caught an article on apparent failure rates for the latest AMD CPUs, which for some lines can allegedly reach up to 5%. We'll see if it's true or not. So be sure to save those CPU boxes anyways for at least a month. Today, we'll give a quick rundown on B550 versus X570 chipsets, then test the performance of this MSI B550 Unified X board with some stock and overclocking results and give you info as to why you might pick B550 for your motherboard chipset. Please give us a quick follow on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and subscribe and hit the bell, all that good stuff. On to some honest testing and opinions, and if you have any questions or find a great motherboard, please leave your comments down below, and any updates on this one will be in the techspinreview.com companion post. Let's get to it. The new FSP Hydro Pro G is reliable even in harsh environments. A compact, fully modular 80 plus gold supply with dual ATX 8 pin, eco switch, 10 year warranty, and it's perfect for your next build. Check it out at the link below. So, B550 or X570, which to get? The newer B550 chipset is replacing its lower cost last gen B450 version, but also competes with the older, more costly high end X570 boards with honestly not that much difference in price. Either chipset is quite capable for a work or gaming PC with the fastest Zen 3 CPUs like the Ryzen 9 5900X, and there isn't much separation between chipset lines. TLDR, B550 will be fine for most, while X570 is better for extreme overclocking, six more USB 10G ports with workstation and future proofing in mind. Where the X570 excels is full Gen 4 PCIe, and it's useful for running multiple PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. More SATA drives achieve better to extreme overclocking with Ryzen 7 and 9 CPUs with better VRM designs, have 5G or 10G LAN port options with high-end boards, or running two or more GPUs for workstation use. They have more USB 10G ports and better support older Ryzen CPUs, and the X570 boards use an active fan to cool the chipset on the motherboard. If this is your pick, you can save with Gen 3 right now as Gen 4 NVMe SSDs and cards have very little difference to normal productivity or even gaming. For example, a Western Digital 1TB Gen 3 SN750 goes for about $138 US dollars. The Gen 4 SN850 is priced at $221 at the time of video production and that's getting close to a 40% markup. If you're not running dual graphics cards or Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, you can save cash going with B550 to get better components. Still get some decent overclocking with Ryzen 5 or 7, and many B550s offer good VRM designs on par with the X570 versions, and there's better adoption of 2.5G LAN internet. Just look for the features you need at the price that you can stomach. Onto the board, and a quick summary. The MSI B550 Unify X handles 5000 series AMD CPUs, has quad M.2 slots, and is a really solid performer with a very capable VRM solution. With a 5900X overclocked to 4.6 GHz, we got just oh, over 9000 in Cinebench R20 and the first sub 5 minute time in Blender Classroom. With VRMs running around 58 to 59 degrees Celsius at a 4.6 GHz overclock, the B550 Unify X has really solid construction and all black design with none of that RGB nonsense. 2.5G LAN with Wi-Fi 6, the non-X variant, set a world record at 6.155 GHz, likely with LN2. With great connectivity and surprisingly no real issues at all, it's a solid pick for a new AMD setup. MSI's latest MEG B550 Unify X motherboard supports the latest Zen 3 architecture AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, including the 5900X and 5950X. And the Unify non-X runs around 290 USD, so hopefully the B550 Unify X should run for about 300 to 320 US dollars. Listings are a bit sparse on Amazon, so we're unable to confirm pricing. The ATX size B550 Unify X uses a six layer PCB design and a very robust power solution with a direct 14 plus 12 VRMs into a 90 amp power stage with titanium choke threes, all on a two ounce thickened copper PCB. Notable is the dual DIMM slots, which run in dual channel at a max of 64 gigs for memory. This usually provides more stability when doing serious overclocking and supports up to 5300 megahertz with a max of 5800 with some verified modules. 
This is the difference between the X version and the standard B550 Unify. That board has four DDR4 slots and supports 5100 megahertz RAM. With steel armor reinforcing the top PCIe, this board has four, yeah, four NVMe M.2 slots, all with shield frozer heat sinks. Uh, top three are Gen 4 capable, bottom is Gen 3. However, don't expect to drop a graphics card in the top PCIe time 16 slot and still get full speed for every M.2, as some will switch over to the Gen 3 chipset. An integrated heatsink design and extended heat pipe combo covers all the VRMs, and that's built into the rear IO shield cover. And this board needs dual CPU A pin for overclocking, so make sure that your power supply has dual ADX A pin. With the B550, the chipset runs a bit cooler than the X570, so there's no fan required on these boards. The rear panel is equipped with flash BIOS and clear CMOS buttons, four USB 2.0 ports, and legacy PS2, onboard HDMI 2.1, quad 10G USB ports, uh, one of those a type C, 2.5 gig LAN, Wi Fi 6, that's the AX standard, along with Bluetooth 5.1, and gold plated Realtek ALC 1220p audio with optical. Note that the HDMI 2.1 is usable only with a CPU with integrated graphics, designated with a G at the end, not an X. So most processors you'd be looking at, uh, 5900X, 5950X, uh, 3700X, anything that's X and not G, won't support this. A Ryzen 5 3400G with four cores, eight threads, looks to be the highest end APU, which is the accelerated processing unit, which is what AMD is calling a CPU with onboard graphics combo. I'd say most consumers would be looking at something more powerful to pair with this board though, so the onboard HDMI is there just in case. Internally, the board has six SATA 3 ports with a 10 gig USB Type-C, two Gen 1 Type-A's, that's five gig speed, and four 2.0 ports, and it does support AMD Crossfire. While there's no bling RGBs on board, if you change your mind later, MSI has included one RGB 12 volt and two ARGB 5 volt headers, along with a Corsair connector too. And in the box, you'll get a one to two RGB LED extension Y cable and a five volt ARGB extension and also a Corsair RGB extension cable. For our build, we have a Ryzen 9 5900X under an MSI Core Liquid 360R AIO water cooler with 16 gigs of Trident uh, Z Royal DDR4 RAM overclockable to 3600 MHz. Super fast Windows 10 loading is thanks to the 500 gig Kingston A2000 PCIe SSD and graphics is an MSI NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super. Powering everything we have is MSI's MAG A850GF in the studio, which has enough headroom and cables like dual CPU A pin and quad PCIe power for the latest GPUs. And if you wanna check out this setup running some Premiere benchmarks, get subscribed as that video should be coming out soon. Let's get on to the results and always overclock your CPU first. Then when that's stable, you can enable XMP to get the DDR4 at max speed. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed and click the bell. It supports us and you'll get notified of our latest videos and reviews. Cinebench R15 finished with a big 3566 points and Cinebench R20 turns in a whopping 8338 marks. Higher numbers here are better. In Blender's BMW test, it completed with a quick one minute 58.60 seconds and lower times are better here. Onto Blender's Classroom, which gave us the fastest result we've ever seen, five minutes, 3.43, which is truly amazing. So we did an all-core boost to overclock to 4.6 gigahertz and into Cinebench R15, we're now 319 points higher at 3885. Next in Cinebench R20, we see a large 669 point gain as we get over 9,000 with a massive score of 9,007. Over to our time test and we run almost eight seconds faster in Blender BMW coming in at one minute 50.92 seconds. Launching Blender's Classroom benchmark, we're 21 seconds quicker at four minutes, 41.72 seconds. And this is the first time we've seen under five minutes, which is very, very impressive. CPU temps were hitting around 82 to 84 at stock under full load and overclocked is 90 to 93 Celsius. And VRMs were hair under 58 at stock and about 59 degrees overclocked after triple back-to-back -back Blender Classroom runs. Now the new Ryzen Zen 3 CPUs have fine-tuned per-core overclocking with PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive. And although we have tweaked settings in here for a few days to try and get the most out of that, we didn't match our first OC results. If you find some ultimate settings, please do drop them in the comments. Also, enabling XMP didn't improve scores, landing within 1% in or in the margin of error, though your results may vary. 
Speaking of RAM, there's a slightly better performance gain going from 2666 to 3200, then say 3200 to 3600, even though that this is the apparent sweet spot for latest gen AMD CPUs. Realistically though, you won't notice your fast RAM or overclocks when surfing the web, but mostly in gaming and processor intense operations like rendering and 3D work. So there's a lot to like about the MSI B550 Unify X. Build quality is excellent, and the VRM design is great and sufficient to handle overclocking loads, and the all black aesthetic with no RGB will definitely appeal to many. Having four N.2 slots with three at Gen 4 is overkill, but there are users who will be looking for huge amounts of fast storage, so this will fit the bill. Connectivity is also very good with the amount of fast USB and SATA, though they did take out a PCIe slot in order to make the extra N.2 slots available. For me personally, instead of the B550 Unify X, I would probably be looking at the non-X version due to two versus four DDR4 slots. Though the two here do support 64 gigs of memory, and that should be enough for everyone, provided you're buying more expensive 32 gig DDR4 sticks. Onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are really handy, great for getting you up and going fast, and we like the 2.5G LAN port, which is better than straight gigabit speeds. This is really the only thing that we feel needs to be improved here, as we are still really pushing for 10G to become more standard, especially on boards over 250 bucks. But this is an industry-wide issue, as there's not much push to increase LAN speeds when so many consumer modems are still so slow. If you are a prosumer needing fast LAN speeds, 10G cards are going for just under $100 at this time. One thing to note about going Team Red is that while AMD is delivering great performance here, you will need to have a graphics card to get up and running. Most of the main AMD CPUs don't have onboard graphics, you'll have to shop for those specifically, and they don't really make sense to buy as the 5900X blows it out of the water. A lot of mainstream Intel CPUs, on the other hand, feature onboard graphics, so you can use your PC in the meantime while you wait for the crazy GPU prices to come down to a more reasonable level. With better looks and higher tier connectivity than Z490 chipsets, we're actually drooling at the various Z590 offerings which have slowly started appearing on all the manufacturers' websites. And let us know if there's one that you want us to check out. Thanks again to MSI for this test setup which allowed us to do some testing and overclocking. And if you decide to pick up an MSI B550 Unify X using our affiliate links below, will help us out here with no extra cost to you. Be on the lookout for a future Premiere benchmark video using the 5900X too, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Techspin Review to see when that video drops. And we have posts up at TechspinReview.com. Next, we'll have a review of the Cooler Master TDE 500 mesh case, so stay tuned. If you're thinking about a B550 or X570 motherboard for your AMD CPU, or are considering a new Intel with a Z590 chipset, we want to hear your thoughts and questions down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. And we depend on your support, so please smash that subscribe button to keep new content coming and click the bell to get notified when we put up a new video. We check the comments and we do respond to most, so if you have a question or if we miss something, then please do tell us down below. And let us know what you'd like to see next. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.